guys, I'm Rohit and I'm back from the logistic regression class. So today we are going to talk about something called decision trees, right? So before we get into decision trees, let's first even understand why even decision trees, right? So first let's recap what we had learned from the previous class. So we had learned about logistic regression. Uh, what was the most basic uh, problem with logistic regression? What were the ones? So let's first think about them and let's jot them down before we kind of proceed further. One is they are linear algorithms, right? So linear algorithms, basically what do they, what does even a linear algorithm mean? So before in the last class we had touched down upon this a small bit, but let's kind of go through this entire concept of what are linear classifiers versus non-linear classifiers. So to do that, let's first take an example, right? So let's take an example of you planning to go for a movie. So the decision is clearly a classification problem. That is, you would either go for a movie or you would not go for a movie. So y equals to 0 slash 1. So 0 is when you are planning to go for a, not go for a movie. 1 is when you are planning to go for a movie, right? Now, what are different independent features that it could be dependent on? Right, so you already know this, right? So what, what could be something that your, your decision for movie going could be dependent on? Let's say price of the tickets. I'm noting that down, price. What is some other variable that it could be dependent on? Say X2, which is distance of the movie, all right? So you're someone who says that, okay, I think the distance is something very far, you probably won't go for the movie vice versa, right? Yeah, so these are two variables and when I say linear decisions, linear algorithms, what I mean is if your decision is one or a zero, you can easily plot it using some kind of linear algorithm like this. So here you see there are, this is a normal logistic regression curve, right? You recognize this from the previous class. So what does it say? It says that your decision to go or no is basically dependent on two factors x1 and x2 such that y equals to 1 plus the sigmoid of theta naught plus theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2. So obviously if you have, you are someone who probably prefers going for a, you know, you are someone who gives a lot of weightage to the distance of the movie hall, then probably this particular factor, which is the theta 2, right, which is the parameter, which is the weightage given to the x2, which is distance, you would probably give a lot more weightage to distance, right, because you are someone who says that, okay, the movie hall is very far, probably I won't go for the movie, right, versus say you are someone who probably is someone who is like, I don't care if where the movie is, if it's really good, if the price is low, I'm gonna go for that, right, so, so then you are someone who probably play, places a lot of uh, weightage on this particular first factor, which is x1 price, right? So that's how linear logistic regression works, right? This is exactly the curve of a logistic regression and this is a linear decision. You have a linear decision where you give a lot of weightage to some factor more than the other and your decision comes out like this. And just to plot it for you, this is how, for example, if you have movie halls like this, versus the ones where you won't go, there's a clear linear decision boundary between them, right? So this is how normally linear model looks like. Now to understand what is exactly a non-linear model, let's now add another factor, which is X3. X3 is say weather. So now you're saying that, okay, um, I'll, this is good about price and distances and all of that, but let me now talk about weather. And I'm someone who probably is so particular about the weather that if the weather is good, then I'm up for closer, then I really don't care if I have to travel a lot far or if the distance is really good or bad, right? But if the weather is really not good, then my, the weightage that I give to distance is a lot more higher. Right, so if the weather is good, then I probably don't care much about the price or distance. But if the weather is bad, then I give a lot of weightage to the price distance factor, right? Because I don't want to travel in bad weathers. Right, so now you suddenly have, now you suddenly have another variable x3, which is weather. And your current equation is not like this, that you, your weather, the decision on 
all three of this factor does not vary equally, right? If the weather is good, the decision looks like something different versus the weather is bad, the decision looks something very different. So these are something that are called nonlinear models, right? So this is exactly what we are going to talk about today and some of the lectures following this. That what happens when you have models or decisions that are not exactly linearly dependent. So linearly dependent means that if you change your decision slightly, if one of your variables change slightly, the output decision would also slightly change, right? But this is not the case. If your weather changes here by a slight margin, probably your decisions could change from suddenly going to not going because the models are very different, right? So kind of to explain that intuitively, this is like this. So you have some weather threshold. On this side of the model, there's one kind of model uh, if the weather is above a threshold. If the weather is below a threshold, the model looks something which is extremely different, right? So let me just make it extremely different. So this is exactly what a nonlinear model is, right? So now that you understand what is a linear model versus a nonlinear. So now we are going to talk about decision trees, right? So decision trees as i have already explained why the need to first do decision tree is this uh, there are models which are we need to train models which are non-linear because a lot of the data that we deal in real life are actually non-linear data it's very hardly that you would probably come across something that is completely linear right so we need something which is more advanced than simple logistic regression or linear regression so that's what we start today but the best part about today's lecture is that it's very intuitive it's very intuitive and it's very basic like it's something that you can probably think of yourselves and something that you can come up completely by yourself, right? If you're just kind of putting through the effort, you would be very easily be able to figure out the entire algorithm. Uh, so that's just, that's one header I wanted to give you guys that this is extremely easy. This is very basic, simple, right? This is not much of a, you know, gradient descent, nothing of that sort. It's very simple, very easy to pick up, okay? So now what exactly have we covered till far? So we far we have covered Python basics, intermediate, descriptive, inferential stats, feature engineering, linear, logistic, right? So till this point, you are familiar with all of linear algorithms, how to use them, how to use them for cross validation and all of that. Today, we are talk about something which is a non-linear algorithm and that's, so I'm gonna skip this story. So before we kind of go and understand Yeah, so this is exactly what I was mentioning, right? So decision trees are extremely intuitive family of algorithms, extremely easy to understand. And trust me, it's not something that is really going to take a lot of time at your end. So before we understand decision trees, let's first understand what exactly is the intuition behind decision trees, right? So what is the intuition? So before machine learning systems came along, there were rule based systems, right? Rule based systems are basically a set of if and else rules, which says that Okay, so if I'm supposed to give someone a loan or not, uh, that is a set of if and else rules. So if someone has income, which is already good, then I'm probably not going to go and check for his other criteria. I'm just going to check that if he's, if he's really old, uh, as in someone who's already settled, then does he already have some big loan on his name or not? If he doesn't have, probably I'm going to go ahead and give him a loan. Versus if your age is low, then I'm going to check what is your education and some other more background criteria, right? So that is how exactly a decision making system normally falls. So you see this diagram, right? So in this diagram, so this is what I'm saying. The first step is the income. So first you're going to check for income, right? So income is the first basic criteria. So on based on income, there could be three possible values, right? You are someone who's a high earning, you're someone who's medium or someone who could be earning low, right? So if you're going, if you're someone who earns earning high, so you're falling into this bracket, as I said, right? So if you're already high income, and then I'm gonna just go and check for your age, right? If your age is something which is already in the bucket 31 to 40, I'm gonna say yes, let's go ahead and give him a loan because I think he already has a high income and his age is also above a threshold, a safe guy to give a loan. But if your income is high, but your age is less than 30, this could be no. And this is a demo example. This probably is not something that you would always see in a bank. This is not as simple in a bank. So don't get worried there. 
so medium, right? If you're a medium income guy, then I'm gonna check for if you're a student or not, right? If you're a student, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a loan. But if you're not a student, then I'm again gonna go and check for your age, right? Which is basically this part of this thing, right? So your income is medium, you go as a check for student or not. If a student is yes, then you go and give him a loan. If it is not a student, then you go and check for age, right? So that's exactly how this, so this kind of becomes some more clearer as we look at some more other slides. So yeah, this is what exactly is a much shorter version, easy to understand with much more description. I'm gonna explain the description in a bit. For till that, just hold on and let's understand the decision tree concept again. So again, this is the same problem. I'm gonna go to a bank, I'm gonna ask if I have to be given a loan. So how does the thing currently operate? So you have something where you first gonna go and check for age, which is like, okay, someone is already greater than age, 40. I think he's someone who should be given a, you know, just probably do some small check. The small check is just check if he's already age greater than 40 and just check if he's a homeowner or not. If he's a homeowner, give him a credit. He has got an age, he has got a home on his name. What more do you want? Right, so give him a credit. If he's not a homeowner and his income is greater than 5,000, you know, yeah, probably he's a well settled guy who probably just doesn't own home, right? So you wanna still give him a loan, right? So this, then you're again gonna go and say, give him a credit, right? But if income is not greater than 5,000, you're gonna say, okay, I think there's a bit of a doubt there because his age is not greater than 40, he doesn't have a home, and his income is also not really high. Probably might be a tough trap, right? So then you're probably gonna say refuse. So this is exactly how decision currently in banks or say most of the other places where machine learning has not arrived yet. Uh, this is mostly the scenario, right? So you have multiple stages of decision and each stage is an if and else. So if this condition is satisfied, go and check for some other condition and keep on checking. Versus if your decision is no, then you keep on checking some other step of conditions. And you keep on doing this, right? So this is the whole idea of how decisions have I met before machine learning came into real. And decision tree is exactly mimicking this entire architecture. Decision tree exactly does the same thing. Except the only thing is in case of earlier system, this rules, right? So age would be greater than 40 and then checking if homeowner or not. So these steps were decided by bank officials or people who are in charge of it. In case of decision tree, these rules are written by the algorithm. That's the only major difference, right? So it's very intuitive, right guys? So you just a set of decisions that you need to make. And this set of decisions are decided by the algorithm itself. That's about it, right? So all, if we now have to understand decision trees, all we have to basically understand is how these decisions are made, right? So we'll come to that in a bit. But before we go there, let's understand the organization of the tree, right? So this first node, right? The first node where entire population is located, right? Is called the root node, right? Simple, it's where the entire thing starts off is the root node. Right, this is a root and from here, the rest of the decision making starts. The next nodes from, so each root node and is basically a root node is split into multiple nodes, which are parent nodes, right? And each parent node is further split into child nodes, right? So any node that is further split is basically a parent node. So any node, any node that is split, even this one, right? Yeah, so, this node, right? So this particular node homeowner, homeowner is, so you are taking a decision based on whether he's a homeowner or not, right? So it's a yes or a no. So any particular node that where you're taking a decision and you're splitting the population into two or more halves, that is basically called a parent node, right? And the particular nodes where you split that entire population into is called child node, right? So this is intuitive, right? So a root node is also a root node as well as a parent node, right? because you are making a decision at the root node as well. So that is also a parent node. And any node further going down, any node that is being split, where you're making a decision based on some criteria is a parent node. And you keep on doing this till you reach a point, right? Where you say, okay, I think I have reached a place where the entire population. So you start off with say, so at this level, you start off with say 500 people, right? So let me kind of now draw this out for you once again. Yeah, so, this is your first root node, right? This first node, the entire population is here. So this is called 
say so let's say there are 50 people in the first node right so this is a root node right and because you're going to make a decision based on some criteria say age right age is what we saw there right so age greater than 40 so you're going to split people into age less than 40 and age greater than 40 right so because you took a decision here you basically based on age you divided the population into two groups. So now because there was a decision being made, so this is a parent node. And these are child nodes. Now each child node can also be again parent node because you are going to again split this based on some criteria, right? So this child node can also be parent node for some other child node and so on and so forth, right? So you get the hang of concept, right? So there's a root node, you split that and you keep on splitting, right? So now the first question to answer is, so when, till when do we keep on splitting this, right? So to understand, to answer that question, let's first understand what is the objective of the decision tree as such, right? So what is the objective of decision tree? So my objective was to basically say whether to give someone a loan or not, right? That was the objective. So I have 50 people of which say 26 people were given loan and 24 people were rejected, right? So ideally, I want to basically build a decision tree, right? Such that my all people who have been given a loan have a particular set of characteristics and people who have not been given a loan have a different set of characteristics, right? So what I'm going to do is 26 people have been given loan, 24 people have not been given loan. The idea of the decision tree algorithm is to basically come up with a series of decisions such that 26 people have a separate set of decisions, 24 people have separate set of decisions, right? So, I'm going to kind of clear this and draw this again with a neater. So, you have the entire population, 26, 24. 26 people have been given loan, 24 people have not been given loan, right? And your idea is to split them in such a way that these two nodes are as different from each other but within themselves they are very similar, right? So now let me repeat that statement for you. So your idea of decision tree is to basically build nodes such that your two child nodes or two or whatever child nodes you are building is basically something that is as different from each other but very similar to each other, right? So let's understand this with an example. So suppose you had some criteria based on which you could directly separate the entire population into people who gave loan and people who did not, who were rejected, right? So if there was one particular criteria, say age or something, right? Based on which you take a decision. It's not a set of decisions, just one decision. Let's consider that for simple understanding purposes so we have you could if you could somehow basically split using one decision that would be the best thing right you don't want to check a lot of decision your whole decision is based on criteria such that you know you're splitting the entire population based on just one criteria so that's the best thing so this is a very successful and very easy to understand decision node right so there's some one criteria just one criteria based on which you can split it now let's say that was not the case. So you could not come up with a single single criteria to do it. So based on some criteria, you have now a node which contains 24, of the 24 people who are given loan, you contain 22 people. And on this side, you contain 28 people of which 26 people were given loan, two people were not given loan, right? So of those, you, had, you could not clearly demarcate all of them, but you came up with some kind of decision or if else statement such that you have separated 22 people who have not been given loan. So these people are people who have not, who have been rejected, right? And this is a complete, the entire population is basically all the 22 people. But this population consists a mixture of 26 people who were given loan and two people who were not given loan, right? So now you need to separate them again into such that you can have 26 people in one node and two people in the other node, right? So, you, so the, in the first case, you had a very simple decision making algorithm which could just split them into two parts, loan given, loan not given. In the second case, you couldn't do that. You 
came up with the best decision and you still had all the people who could be given loan but on the other hand you had people mixture of both the things right and then you need some other decision making to separate them right so now you get an intuitive feel of what exactly a decision making algorithm is supposed to do think of this basically as a mixture a mixture the first point is basically a mixture like oil and water right your whole job of decision making algorithm is to basically come up with those filters or those if and else conditions such that you best separate your oil and water right so your first node consists of this consists of one and zeros right so one and zero a lot of one and zeros this now consists only of zeros so you have done a very good job right but this contains still ones, a lot of ones and a couple of zeros, right? So ones and a couple of zeros. So all you have to do is now come up with some other algorithm, which now takes care of all of these ones in a separate place and zeros, right? So that's all you have to do. So this is the whole idea of decision making, decision tree as such, right? So now, when do we actually keep on stop? when do we actually start so now let's go back to the slides and now let's get a better understanding of this decision tree again right so you are basically doing the age based splitting and then some other decision some other decision right so when do you kind of say that okay let's stop the idea is you stop when you have reached a node which consists of population which are completely from one kind right you understand that when you have population from so now be back here so now you have population here which is completely of people who have not been given loan and this population who has so you don't stop at this stage right because at this stage there's still some mixture which is left to separate you only stop when you have mixed when your nodes right the child nodes have that you have come up after splitting consists completely of one particular type of population right the decision variable that you're trying to separate your decision variable is completely homogeneous. So this is what I mean by homogeneous, right? So you have a node, you, this child node basically consists of people who have not been given loan. And that's why they're homogeneous, right? So all of them are people who have not been given loan. This is also a homogeneous word, right? So this contains people who have all been given loan. But this, on the other hand, is a heterogeneous, right? So this is heterogeneous, this is homogeneous, right? So do you understand why this is homogeneous, right? So these are all people who are content from one particular class and they all look the same. People who have not been given loan. This on the other hand is someone contains people who have all been given loan and they are homogeneous, right? So your whole objective of decision tree is basically to do this splitting process. So now you start off starting here and you keep on splitting things till you reach a point where you are like, okay, I think I've reached a point where all my population is of a particular type. So all population of people who have been given a loan or people who have not been given a loan, right? So you do, until and unless you don't reach that kind of a line or that kind of a child load, you are not going to stop, right? So that's the whole idea about decision tree. So now you get an idea, right? So you start off from a root node, you keep on doing this splitting and you kind of keep on splitting till you reach a point where you have reached peep nodes where you are either to be given a loan completely or not to be given a loan, right? Is that clear, right? So now, uh, let's kind of go back the slides and let's have a look into what exactly this means. So now root node, root node is the one that represents the entire population or sample and this further gets divided into two or more homogeneous sets, sets or nodes, right? In the same word, so don't worry about that. Splitting. Splitting is a process of dividing the node into two or more sub nodes. The whole idea of splitting, as we have already now discussed, is this that we want to separate our mixture, right? So the child, the parent node basically consists of a mixture of your, you know, there's people who have been given a loan, people who have not been given a loan. There's a mixture, and your whole process of splitting is to separate them into two different categories of people who have been given a loan. You would ideally want to come up with one particular decision, some magical decision that completely separates your people who have been given loan, people who have not been given loan. But in real life scenarios, you won't be able to come up with a decision like that. So what you do is you come up with something that best separates them and you keep on separating them further, further down the line till you have something which are very different, right? So that's what splitting is. So next is up is what is decision node? 
So decision node is basically all those nodes, decision node or you call it parent node or whatever. So basically all those nodes where you are making a decision is called a decision node. And when you're making a decision, you're basically splitting that node into two or more parts. So all of those parts that you split into is called a child node. And leave for terminal node is basically that final node, right? So go back to this example. So this is your root node. This is your root node. You split that because root node and because you're splitting and you're splitting them into multiple two parts. So now this is also a decision node, right? Or a parent node. And we are splitting them into multiple parts, which are called child nodes. And each of the child nodes are again then split up into. So this child node is again a parent node and you're splitting them further up. Now you're not splitting this particular node, right? Because you have reached a population where it consists of people who have not been given loan completely. So this 22 people, are pe all 22 of them have not been given loan. So you don't want to split them further, right? Because you have now a decision node which contains complete, which is completely homogeneous. It contains people of all zeros, right? So you don't want to split them further. So this is a leaf or a terminal node. But in this case, 28, it's a, still a mixture, right? There you have come up with the best possible ways to separate them. But still, there's some mixture and you want to split them further. So you have split them. That's why this is a decision node or a parent node. And you have split them into two further categories of child nodes, right? So this particular node consists of 26 people, all of them who have been given loan. So you don't want to split them again them further. So this is again a terminal node. This is also a terminal node. You don't split your terminal nodes further because ideally either you don't want to split them or probably you have reached population where it's just one person and there's nothing to split or probably there's no meaning to split. That is basically you have reached a completely homogeneous population. So we'll talk about this kind of things later but for now you get an understanding of the decision tree which is you have a node, you split them and you keep them splitting your whole idea is to basically separate your ones and zeros using some decision filter, right? So now, now let's go back to the slides and kind of understand things a bit more in detail. Log on to Grey Atoms learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.